This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. At long last, the Women's World Cup is finally here for 2023. We're going to break that break down all things World Cup today by bringing back on Dr. Ed Fang, picking his brain on this year's field, what he thinks of USA, if he thinks they can do it for the third consecutive time, and much more to get you ready for what should be a fun couple of weeks of soccer. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for number fire joined here as mentioned by dr ed feng you can find his work over at thepowerrank.com and check him out on twitter at the power rank ed it is a delight to have you back on the show here for today how you doing i'm doing pretty well it's been a lot of fun looking into uh soccer from the women's perspective and uh i think uh i think there's a lot of interesting things going on in the markets and uh looking forward to talking about it I'm happy to hear that. I'm excited to hopefully lock in some bets as we get ready for the World Cup. Um, the times of the games, you know, not going to be able to. Uh, my bedtime does not allow me to watch most of these, but um, it'll still be a lot of fun to track it throughout the time as well. Fun to watch a good U.S. team in action, too. So no shade to the men's team, by the way, but fun to see a legitimate contender on the women's side here. We'll talk about the U.S. and talk about their prospects and much more. But, Ed, it's been a while since we caught up. Uh, we last had you on, I think, around the NFL draft. So how's your summer been going? Summer's been really good. Been working on football, obviously, getting ready for everything going on at the Power Rank uh, at my new newsletter at thepowerrank.com. It's been a pretty fun summer with Five Nuggets Saturday. Uh, really getting into prop bets. Yeah. Kind of started with the NBA uh, and more so with baseball because uh, my people who know a lot more than me tell me it's really hard to beat the money line. So uh, really been looking at strikeout props there. That's been a ton of fun. Have some tools that I'm, I'm probably going to uh, publicize a little bit more in the next coming weeks. So, yeah, doing some new things uh, over the summer, but also also really focused on football and uh, the 2023 season. Interesting. I actually have a worse ROI on strikeout props than I do on money line. So you might need to like collaborate, combine forces here a bit so you can up my strikeout prop game. That's why we have Rob Freeman on on Friday's Pitching Ninja right. to kind of, you know, handle that street for me. Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, money lines have been more profitable for me this year. Interesting. Maybe it's variance, but who can say? Yeah, no, I think it's a lot of variance. I mean, I've been probably seriously doing strikeouts for a couple of weeks now. I definitely checked out Pitching Ninja and some of your shows when I was first mm -hmm. getting started. And I don't know, strikeouts have been going really well. I, yeah. I think that is a lot of variance, but I also do think there's a lot of value. Uh, you can just kind of tell when yeah. these when these strikeout values like oscillate a lot yeah. um, from game to game as pitchers get hot, pitchers get cold in the strikeout territory. Uh yeah, I mean, it, it seems it, – it, I mean, I, I think we would probably all agree that long run, you're going to find more value in props market probably. than, yeah. uh, than you know, those primary markets. You know, same thing with NBA. Like, I'd rather be betting a point prop than uh, a spread. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting opportunity, right? Because it's not like I, – I, I think there's still value in trying to attack the big props in some sense. I think strikeouts is probably a big prop. I think mm -hmm. it's something that like people would like to bet. And, and while there's value there, uh, definitely, definitely looking, looking to it. And, and it's just fun to think about something different and hopefully apply yeah. that to football in the fall. And like thinking about, you know, how can we turn that into like more niche prop markets? Like I've thought about converting my strikeout model into a walk model because at a lot of places you can bet right. walks as well. So, and it'd be just changing two things around. It would be very easy to convert the strikeout model into a pro or a, a walk model as well. So kind of giving that thought of, is this the proper market to use the tools I have and stuff like that? Right. It's it's a lot of fun for sure. Well, we're going to talk right. hopefully. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, it kind of feels like less exciting to bet walks though, right? Oh yeah, for sure. It's way less exciting, which is why it's probably more profitable to do so. <laughs> yeah. No, I kind of wonder about that. I mean, I think yeah. strikeouts are exciting, right? Because yeah. it's got the same kind of feel as, uh, you know, like points. It's like a positive yeah. thing for the player. And, and that I feel like always leads to value in the under, which is something we'll talk about a little bit later today in women's soccer. But uh, I don't know. I mean, my goal always like, especially with five nuggets Saturday is to get people excited, get something like 
yeah. something they want to bet on and then you know disappoint them because it's an under but i think people get that if they read my stuff regularly right <laughs> i think i've had one over you know in the last couple months on on any prop but uh um yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's always like, you know, when you're thinking about it from my perspective, it's, it's kind of like this combination. Like, what can we find that that is probably a little bit easier to find value, but yeah. still something that people really want to bet on? Right. And I just feel like also in the NBA, like it's just a little bit easier to get excited about points than like points plus rebounds plus assists. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So if that's not true, please, someone email me, hit me up on Twitter and tell me. But that, that's kind of my why DFS brain likes a PRH because like it translates so well from one to the other. But I think in general, people probably care. You know, it's easier to think about points than it is other stuff. So I get that for sure. And it tried sizing the research around like three point shot attempts, the variance involved in all that. So I think there's a lot of overlap there, too, which would probably make it easier for you. So. We'll talk yeah. plenty of props. We're going to talk some college football with Ed uh, in a couple of weeks. We're going to talk some NFL with Ed this fall as well. But across the next month or so, we're going to be talking Women's World Cup here every week with Ed, getting his thoughts on this year's field, the U.S., and much more. We'll do that, get an overall view of the Women's World Cup here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Our preview of the Open Championship for golf is up via Brandon Gadula, breaking down his thoughts on the Open Championship at Royal Liverpool. Find that on the Covering the Spread podcast feed on the FanDuel YouTube page and over on FanDuel TV+. Plus. The U.S. women's soccer team is taking on the world, and you can take home bonus bets every time they win with FanDuel because right now, new customers get $100 in bonus bets guaranteed plus another $10 in bonus bets for every Team USA win. Sign up between now and August 3rd. Then place your first $5 bet to unlock your bonus bets. That way, you'll be all set to bet on everything from total goals to player props all tournament long. However you want to play, don't miss your chance to get $10 in bonus bets for every Team USA win, plus $100 in bonus bets guaranteed. Make every moment more with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets, which expire in seven days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Massachusetts. Hope is here. Gambling helpline MA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, one 877 hope and wire Text open Y. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533 4 Two in Connecticut, 1 789 7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1 800 9 with it. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1 800 522 4700, or visit Kansas or ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. Louisiana is 1 877 770 stop. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1 800 gambler.net. Let's just focus now and talk about the Women's World Cup, Ed, for 2023. And this is the first time we've talked women's international soccer on the show with you. So we've talked men's international soccer before plenty. But are you able to take that same process you use in building out men's rankings and apply it over to the women's side of things as well? Absolutely. And that's certainly where I started uh, on my site. I've had you know men's international rankings for a long time. I take match results over... You know, a pretty significant period, like four or five years, use my algorithm that adjusts for strength of schedule. And this is particularly important in the international game when you you really have sharks and minnows, right? You really have some um, really strong teams against some really weak teams. Um, we'll talk about how the United States beat Vietnam 13 to nothing in the last World Cup. Things like that. You need to account for that. So when I adjust for strength of schedule, the strength of my algorithm is that it tends to de-weight those kinds of games. So for the women, I went over and grabbed some data, went everything through the last uh, World Cup, uh, which was which was 2019, took all major competitions uh, since then. Uh, so this would include Euro for the women, uh, Copa America in South America, um, North American competitions, and all, all the major, con oh, and the Olympics too, because the women send their, their top teams to the Olympics as well, put those together. And cranked out some numbers, had some results. You know, the United States is first, uh, England is second. So pretty much looks close to what you expect the favorites to be in the markets. 
So yes, you can apply the same strategy that you do for men to the women for the international uh, game. I do think there are some insights in there. Um, I also do this for XG. You can get XG data for the last World Cup. You can get XG data for Euro in 2022. So that's good because a lot of the prime contenders are the United States and, and teams from Europe. And so you can do that as well. Obviously, you got to be cautious there because you have a limited amount of data in, in a small number of games. And, and XG is great, but XG is far from perfect. You can do all those things. And then the debate was, okay, do I want to make that model better? Do I want to include friendlies in there? Do I want to go all out and and uh, calculate the win probabilities like I do for the men, probability to get out of the group? And the answer I came up with is no. Uh, there are just a rash of injuries across all major teams. Um, in fact, the only two contenders I can find that aren't suffering from significant injuries and absences are Germany and Sweden. Uh, United States is missing players like Mallory Swanson, who's been a big time goal scorer for them in the past. Uh, France is missing one of their top scores as well. It seems like there is an ACL uh, epidemic in women's soccer, which is kind of sad. It's taking out a lot of the top players. Some of the top English women who won Euro uh, not too long ago have retired. Uh, there's some drama within the Sp Spanish Federation because some of the women don't want to play for the coach. So it's kind of a mess. Uh, yeah. So I decided not to perfect that model and to look at some other sources to kind of complement the, the calculations that I'm doing. So basically what you have is a baseline based on your numbers, based on running those numbers and adjusting for schedule. But then you can tweak in your brain kind of teams up and down based on injuries. Is that kind of what you're doing here? Kind of. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I think kind of everyone goes down except for Germany and Sweden, honestly. Yeah. Like, I mean, you, I mean, and then you kind of have to, and I don't, I honestly don't know the rosters that well. Like it, the idea is that the U S is deep enough that they should be able to, uh, they should be able to put out a pretty good squad, even without yeah. three of their top players. Um, should France be able to do that? Probably. Um, can Spain account for some of their absences? Well, the market thinks so. Cause they're one of the favorites. Uh, so but, um, but yeah, I, I think what, what it, what it made me do was to kind of consult two other sources. So the first of those is actually the FIFA rankings. And I know I often make fun of rankings like FIFA, but you know, actually a long time ago, I learned that they actually do a good job with the FIFA women's rankings. They use goals and goal differential when they do the updates after every match. And so it ends up being really similar to what I do for college football and, and that college football model I've actually found to be more accurate than some of the other things that, that I used to do that took season long data and adjusted for strength of schedule. So the FIFA women's rankings are actually really good. Um, they have the United States first, not much of a surprise, but you know, they have Germany and Sweden second and third, which I think is super interesting. They have all the other contenders um, where they should be, and uh, it's going to account for what these teams have done more recently. So it's going to be a little bit more on top of you know, how these European teams did in qualifying, and uh, it's definitely a resource that I go to. And then finally, I've been looking at a lot of player rankings. Uh, just to try to figure out, you know, who has a lot of players uh, out there, you know, who who kind of checks the boxes in terms of elite yeah. players playing at top clubs. Uh, United States certainly does. Although it's interesting because a lot of the U.S. women still play in the U.S. And I, I'm not exactly sure how to compare that to like a Barcelona who won the Champions League in Europe. Uh, it really seems like Barcelona has every top woman in Europe. Um, and uh, except for and so, yeah, it, it's 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 still challenging to figure that out. And so I think it'll be interesting to kind of watch these games and, and see how the players perform. And, and, you know, it's a little bit of a referendum on us soccer versus in Europe. I mean, for the men, we clearly know that Europe is better, but what, what is, what is it for the women? So let's talk about that and talk about the market here, because right now the U S is the favorite to win their third consecutive world cup. They are a plus two forty at FanDuel Sportsbook. England is plus four thirty. Let's talk about the USA portion of that first. Actually, uh, England just lengthened. They're now plus five fifty. Spain is plus four seventy. Now second in those. But as you mentioned before, the FIFA rankings are a bit different. Let's talk about the U S side of that first plus two forty. Ed, do you think they deserve to be effectively in a tier of their own for the women's world cup? 
I think so. Uh, the the women have certainly uh, earned the respect. I mean, they've they've had a really good squad. They had the World Cup victories to prove it. Uh, the numbers all have them as the top team in the world. So I certainly think they deserve to be the favorite. The numbers also suggest that the margin is not that big from the U.S. to like England and, and France and and other teams that were very competitive in the last World Cup. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I, I believe that, you know, the U.S. won the last World Cup, but the XG was really close. And I think they were actually behind uh, England and, and France when they played in the semifinal final. So it, it's not like it's not like we expect the U.S. women to be minus 110 favorites. Right. U.S. versus the field kind of thing. It's it's a lot more even now. Uh, the rest of the world is catching up. And uh, I don't have any problem with the U.S. being the favorite. I'm, I don't really have any interest in that number, but it, it should be competitive. So the U.S. not in a tier of its own. Does that to you mean there is value anyone anywhere else in the market looking at potentially healthier teams, whatever it may be right now? Yeah, honestly, like I, I really like the healthy teams. I like Germany yeah. and Sweden. I think there's value in Germany plus seven, plus seven fifty. Uh, Sweden still eighteen to one. They uh, are I, indeed I, yes. Yeah, I, I really, uh, you know, like I mentioned, they're second and third in the FIFA rankings. They're also really high in my numbers. I, th- I think simply the health is is really going to benefit them. Um, so, I mean, those are the those are the two teams I would I would go to in the futures market. So the FIFA rankings have Germany and Sweden higher as a result of the health, and it sounds like. You're valuing those. Where did those teams kind of settle in if we're not accounting for health? You know, you're looking at your rankings before you factor in the health stuff. Were they still pretty high up there and then are just kind of benefiting from that bump after that point? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Germany was third in my numbers, so certainly not too bad. They were fourth in in XG and and they should have uh, that's going to be a better estimate for Germany just because you have data from them from both the World Cup and Euro um sweden was six when i look at uh goal difference so that would be my numbers and then and then six in xg so they, they also check those boxes there as well um and, and they also have like top players in the world you know when you kind of scan some of these top lists of players uh there there's a core of players from both teams that that end up on those lists and are healthy and are going to be at the world cup so Germany plus 750 and Sweden plus 1800, both potential good futures outlets as a result of their health relative to what other teams are dealing with as of right now. Let's stay focused on Team USA here and talk about their first match. They're taking on Vietnam and Ed, their money line is minus 20,000. Yikes. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and guess. We're not talking about that. But when you look at uh, them taking on Vietnam, this game is on Friday. Anything stand out to you in that game right now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the U.S. won 13 to nothing again over Vietnam in the last World Cup. And so that immediately suggested, like, you know, let's look at the total goals. Right. And when it's 13, nothing, it kind of suggests an over. Right. Um, so if you look at the, you know, if you look at the over, go to over under six and a half goals, you know, it's, it's pretty much even. Right. So mm-hmm. so the total is, is six and a half goals. That's that's just too much. When you go back to the last World Cup, that U.S. Vietnam game was the only game to go the total to go over six goals. Um, so the idea is that, you know, it's really hard to score goals at the international level um, that that the U.S. is unlikely to have a performance similar to the last World Cup. Obviously, probably not getting too much help from Vietnam in terms of scoring goals. I do like the under here. Uh, one thing that you can do, you can actually look at the Spain Costa Rica game, which has a similar money line. And uh, you can see that their over under for goals is more like five and a half or four and a half. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not quite the same. So uh, I, I think, I think six and a half goals is a lot. If you want to bet on the U S game, I think, I think go under six and a half goals. The Spain Costa Rica game to be uh to, uh, outline what that is. If you go to the five and a half goals, the under for them is minus 174. The right. Spain money line in that game is the exact same as the US one. So it sounds right. kind of as if, Ed, that 13 nil matchup is going to play a massive, massive factor in driving that total up for that one match. 
I I certainly think that's the case. Of course, anytime that you recommend an under in a game like this, you are uh, opening yourself to look like a complete fool because sure. you know it's not out of the question that ten nothing happens. Sure. Um, but but I do think under is is the way to go here. So and the thing about that is is you're not betting, you know, an average. The average could be about six and a half because there are situations in which thirteen nil happens. You're betting a median. And if the median, if it goes under six and a half goals more than 52% of the time, then that's a profitable bet. And based on the data we had from the last World Cup, like you were saying, where they're typically low scoring, it seems like the odds that it goes under six and a half, even in a very slanted game, seem to be pretty high. Even looking at similar games, like you said, that is a big number. So as you said, Ed, unders, not the most fun thing to bet. Um, You know, they can... Definitely make your heart beat a little bit if uh, the U.S. gets out to like a 3-0 lead right away. Uh, but right. money's fun, right? Yeah, no, it is fun. I mean, obviously the sweat is a little different from an under because you're yeah. just sitting there the whole game being like, yeah. all right, please uh, please take your foot off the gas, U.S., which right. probably doesn't happen. Right. But um, but I still like under six and a half goals here. Especially and that game is actually at a reasonable time too. It's at nine o'clock Eastern. Uh, so right. that one I actually can watch, which is not as, uh, you know, I prefer to bet unders when I can't watch it and I can wake up the next morning, see how it went, feel good about it. But, you know, I think it'll be a good way to get some action on that uh, U.S. versus Vietnam game to open things up. Let's talk about the futures market too, Ed, here, because um, we did talk about like the actual like to win the World Cup futures. But there are a lot of other futures. There are some player futures as well here, groups, whatever it may be. Looking at the other futures beyond just the outright winner market, where are you seeing value right now? Yeah, I think the golden boot is kind of interesting. Uh, so there's two U.S. women that are, uh, you know, the favorites. Uh, Alex Morgan is 34 years old. She's been around a while. When I learned that she was 34 years old, I was kind of like, whoa, I'm old. Yeah, same. <laughs> I remember when was, uh, you know the 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 young new thing on the U.S. women's right. national team. So I don't know. Is she effective as she used to be and, and going to be the golden boot? Maybe. Um, I, I'm not sure that there's too much value in those two. Sam Kerr is widely considered the the best women's player in the world. Whether you look at like the salary she gets paid in England, uh, you look at some of these rankings of players, she's she's always at the top. It's also interesting. She's at home. She's Australian. So so there's a lot uh, kind of going on there. Um, but, you know, her odds are lower because she's probably not going to get as many matches as the U.S. women. Right. Uh, Australia is not expected to go as far. Um, you know, they're plus 900 to win, which means, you know, I mean, they're they're probably a stretch to see them get all the way to the semis. Uh, and certainly less likely than than the U.S., um, I actually really do. I haven't bet it yet, but I've been thinking about bet, betting Alexandra Pop, uh, mm-hmm. who is Germany's top scorer, 16 to 1. Uh, you know, expect a Germany team to make it pretty far, at least the semifinal. Pretty decent shot of making the semifinal. Um, and she's going to be their top goal scorer. This is, uh, this is a woman that probably has about the same goal rate as Alex Morgan in international matches and probably faces more difficult competition playing in Europe there. Um, if, if you want to have some fun, uh, I, I think that's one I would I would go with, I, and, and honestly, like ten to one on 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 Sam Kerr is, is probably not uh, it would would also be fun as well. Alexander Pop is sixteen to one right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook to win the Golden Boot, and it does correlate well with your Germany outright because you're expecting them to exceed market expectations there, which does correlate to this more gains, means more shots at goals, stuff like that. But also, it sounds like you view Pop as being like the top goal scorer on Germany. So if they score, she's benefiting more. Whereas, you know, maybe Morgan has more competition on on the U.S. side of things as well. So it sounds like there are a couple benefits of pop that we may not find at shorter odds. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I do think she's the primary scorer. Actually, go down a little bit. Like with the U.S., it looks like you can see Trinity Rodman also is on this list. That's Dennis the Rodman's daughter. Nice. And I can I cannot wait to like watch her play to yeah. see if you can see anything of, <laughs> of her father in her play, uh, which I think would be kind of hilarious. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I think the U.S. women, even even without Marilyn Ray Swanson, uh, looks like they have uh, a lot of women up there that that are going to potentially score a lot of goals. Um, so, yeah, I would I would go with with uh, with a woman from from another nation that also has a chance of going deep. Should pro- also probably score a lot of goals. 
And again, it ties in with our other bets too. So that's always going to be a comforting thing where the market, if it's off in one area, it can be off multiple areas and kind of finding the spots where you can benefit from those errors is beneficial. Got a lot of games, Ed. They're, they're starting uh, Thursday morning, actually, uh, with the first matches. So looking at matches, anything stand out to you, teams that may be undervalued, any markets you want to bet right now? I'm not looking to bet kind of these matches until a little bit later. You can tell from these odds that they're pretty lopsided. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's not, you know, when, when it tends to be two even teams, I'm going to go through and use my numbers to calculate what the win probability should be. And I think that'll give you kind of a decent estimate. And you can kind of apply what you see in, in actually watching these matches to, to figure out if there's value. Uh, as of right now, you know, I mean, I'm not really interested in minus <laughs> 20,000 for, for yeah. the U.S. or Spain <laughs> to, to win. I mean, that's that. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite interested in that right now. Um, I, I certainly will, like, when there are competitive right. games. I mean, certainly as we get into the quarterfinals, these games will get very competitive. The odds will be pretty even, and that's when I want to pounce. Uh, but and, and I'll probably put some of these predictions in my newsletter um, in Five Nuggets Saturday. But in terms of betting it, I'm going to wait a little bit. And I think the other benefit, too, is you can kind of test your numbers. You can see the numbers that you have. Are they performing well? You know, are they meeting expectations here? And you can decide, OK, I've got more confidence in my numbers now. Since we get to those matches that might be a bit more highly contested, I feel like getting that more getting more data in there, allowing yeah. yourself to test your model with your eyes. I feel like that's another benefit of potentially holding off. Now, you're not just betting into like these massive markets, but also you can actually yeah tell whether or not the the numbers you have have value relative to the market exactly and uh yeah i'm interested to see exactly how the numbers tend to work out yeah i am as well it's going to be a fun uh tournament to track as mentioned we're going to be talking about this every week with ed uh getting his read on the markets talking team usa and much more so to get those chats as they go live make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating on apple Podcasts or spotify and also do not forget to check us out on the fanduel youtube page or on the fanduel tv plus app on amazon fire apple tv or roku ed been a blast to talk to you once again. If people want to find Five Nuggets Saturday, if they want to find anything else you got cooking over at the Power Rank, where can they do so? Check me out at thepowerrank.com. Certainly uh, a lot of the best stuff is in the newsletter uh, with Five Nuggets Saturday. Like right now, I can guarantee on Saturday there'll be a strikeout prop in there. Uh, right now, since the NBA season ended, I've been throwing some football futures in, which is not my favorite thing to do because it obviously – you can't cash that ticket right. over the weekend, which is, <laughs> um, I don't know. I would prefer that you cash some tickets and want to come back and, and read the newsletter the next Saturday. So, uh, but, and then I definitely talk about analytics and, and obviously in the middle of getting ready for football season and uh, in the newsletter also have a, a preview series for both college football and NFL. So check that out at thepowerrank.com. All righty, and find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank as well. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. Want to thank you all for tuning in. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow, talking some MLB futures, and I'll talk uh, the Hungarian Grand Prix and talk some NASCAR as well. We'll talk to all of you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>